every person on earth, one way or another, heard of Haiti or heard of references of Haiti and its many synonyms. One relatively new phrase, shithole, was allegedly used by our previous president, Donald J. Trump. And of course, the world's famous one, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, has not retired, but is still in use. The phrase doesn't go into detail as to why the island's nation is poor, so non-Haitians take it to be a characteristic, a symptom that exists as Haitians exist. When the word poor is used, it's not referring to poor in mind, poor in spirit or body. It is referring to the nation's economic strength, strength of industry, ability to not just produce goods and services, but strength to produce educators, innovators, entrepreneurs, thinkers, and problem solvers. Year after year, Haiti drowns in a 40% budget deficit. Are Haitians incapable of practicing fiscal responsibility? We know that to be entirely false because among the diaspora, there are people that can balance any budget and regardless of the institution. In a fair economic system governed by rules and regulations, Haitians thrive. People of Haitian descent thrive. So if you are leaning towards believing the notion we are incapable of budgeting our wealth, that is a mistake. It was reported that President Jovenel Moïse, before his assassination, cut many lucrative contracts in an effort to cut waste and to find affordable solutions to public and private partnerships. That act itself is, is demonstrating fiscal responsibility. For Haitians, the stakes are always high. In Haiti, balancing the budget is detrimental and in the United States, it's just stressful. Managing in times of deficits. This is the title of our conversation today. Attorney Teresa Therles, who serves as the city manager for the city of North Miami, Florida. Prior to that, Ms. Therles was the interim director of procurement for the county of Santa Clara and assistant director of the Miami-Dade County Internal Services Department. Welcome, Teresa. How are you today? I'm well, thank you, and thank you for having me. Teresa, it is an honor for us to have you. We wish we could have had you earlier, but of course we wanted to give you time to get acclimated to your new position. So we're gonna get right into it. You've been successful in what seems like all of your endeavors. What's the most challenging institution you've had to manage? Well, I definitely think that most institutions all have their own challenges. Currently at the city of North Miami, we have unique challenges. Teresa, I don't know about all of the challenges, but I do know of some. Let's talk about the city's deficit. Yes, um, at the end of fiscal year 20, we had a deficit of $5 million approximately. Approximately $5 million. When you came in, what was it? When I came in, the deficit was $14 million. Congratulations, Teresa. Please tell us, how did you manage to do that? Well, um, my first year, my first three months here were the end of that last fiscal year. Um, we did have a huge, large sale for property for us at the city, as well as we made some hard cuts in terms of furloughs. And we looked at where our spending was towards the end of the year, and we cut as much spending as we could. Well, Teresa, I know that you've been in management for a very long time and you said something specific. You mentioned furloughs. How did that affect the morale of the people in the city during that time? Yeah, the furloughs, what happens with a furlough is that uh, they would get a day off, but at the same time, they lose pay for that day off. So it definitely affects them monetarily. And in terms of the morale, it's really hard. The new person comes in and says, hey, I'm going to take some money out of your pocket. And that's really hard for some of the employees to understand and to accept. And how have you been able to manage that? I 
I came on and had a really frank discussion um, with the council at the council meetings. I also did send a message to our employees, letting them know that we were going through tough, difficult times, and we're gonna have to make some tough, difficult decisions in order to make sure that we can sustain the city. And ultimately, that's what we wanna do, right? Yes. North Miami is a city with a large population of people of Haitian descent. Most things you do maybe judge by how the majority population benefits. Can Haitians thrive in North Miami? Absolutely, Haitians can thrive in North Miami. And I would want to say that um, as many Haitians that want to come and relocate to North Miami, they should. We have opportunities at the city to help them thrive in business. We have opportunities to help them thrive socially. I think this is a great city. It continues to grow and there's great opportunities here. Teresa, we are so happy to hear that Haitians can actually thrive in a city that actually uh, holds the largest population in the United States. Please give us one example. I think one example is the amount of home ownership that we have in the city uh, that um, comes from Haitian people. They've been able to purchase their homes and stay here for the last two generations. Excellent, excellent. As the city manager, you are the CEO of the city, voted in by the council. Please explain the structure and how does that work? So the city of North Miami has what we would describe as a council manager form of government. And so the council will meet to uh, bring in and vote in policy um, that is led by the mayor. And once the council brings in the policy, the city manager is now in charge of making sure that all the day-to-day -day operations are operating fully and that all of the policy has been implemented in the city. And how difficult can that be? That can be extremely difficult. Uh, one thing is that I answer to five different council people. I'm also voted in by, by a vote of the majority, which in the case of City of North Miami is three council people. So at any time, if you can imagine having five bosses, <laughs> that is a very uh, intricate balance. Uh, one of the things that I'm firm about doing is understanding that each one has a constituency that they want to serve. And so I work really hard to make sure that I'm implementing the policies that would serve their residents. Great. What is the stress climate in finding financial solutions for the upper, middle, and lower class in the city? I think the stress point uh, within any um, class in, in terms of in the city is that just having to get an understanding of where each person is at that moment. So for instance, if the struggle for a certain family or group is being able to make enough money to survive, then the solutions would be looking towards how can I get more skills that could give higher, pay, higher paying jobs, um, how to do better in saving, and how to figure out how to navigate debt. When you're moving up in a different, the other question could be for another group, would be separately would say, okay, I have enough money to make that, but how do I ensure I have a long-term goal in place? And that would be within savings. The one thing that I think everyone should have in mind is to say, what is the end goal? And no matter where you are in the spectrum, if you have that end goal in mind, you can figure out what you need to do to get you to that place. You know, you mentioned savings. And, you know, when I think about government, I don't necessarily think about savings. So explain to us what does that look like? How can government actually save? Well, for government and saving, um, we have to look at ways that we can do things better. Right? We can spend less in different areas. We've now looked at putting in technologies. This year since I've come, we are looking at finding ways to put most of our services online for residents that can bring down the cost for the government, but also bring down the cost for the residents and also speed up the ability to work with the city and have business with the city. And ultimately that helps with the deficit, right? It all helps, yes. <laughs> Teresa, how's the health of industry in the city? What is working? What's not working? What do we need to bring in? Well, I think we have a good industry, obviously, with COVID-19 that really made a change 
in terms of the industry. The hospitality industry took a strong hit there. But one thing to note is that in North Miami, only about 4% of those that live in Miami, live in North Miami work in North Miami. So in terms of strengthening the industry, we need to look to see what industries we need to bring here so that our residents are working and living here. Some of the industries that I think are very strong, that I know are strong, is the medical, senior living, assisted living industries. That's very strong. In fact, one of our largest employers is a senior living facility here in North Miami. I think one of the challenges that we'll have in terms of making sure that we bring the industry here, we need to look to manufacturing. We have a robust industrial area. Manufacturing is a good piece that can survive here. I think we can still grow on our medical, but also pivoting towards medical and biotech so that we can have higher paying jobs, and then also preparing our residents to be trained in those areas. And, and what would that process look like from an administrative perspective? So currently we do a few things at the city of North Miami now. We offer a small business micro grants which help you with your technology to help you buy uh, equipment that could help you with that, as well as when there are businesses that are having issues in terms of being able to pay, we offer business grants there. What I'm hoping to launch for the city soon is a, a, a Nobi tech industry where we would be targeting specific industries to help them with businesses. Awesome, awesome. And I do believe the city of uh, Miami is actually venturing down that road too. So I, I look forward to seeing some great partnerships there. You have a great project that you're working on. Tell us about it. Well, yes, I have been working quietly to ensure that the city of North Miami gets a train station at 123rd Street. It's something that that many have worked on in previous years that we were actually almost denied and I've worked really strongly with our county commission to ensure that we have an opportunity to be there. So I'm very excited to say that it's currently in NEPA studies with the federal government in order to bring a train station there. I think that that will do wonders for our residents and it'll also bring in people from the outside to stop in and visit North Miami. Great job, Teresa. What, what is the timeline? So the timeline is in several years. Um, in the next three or four years, we're hoping to finalize NEPA studies in mid-2022. And once we can do that, then we can start working with the county to, to fully fund it and to push that forward. Teresa, you are well on your way to balancing North Miami's budget. How is that being done? Well, currently to balance the budget, we are focusing on making sure that we create a budget that we don't go over. So one of the issues that have plagued North Miami's budget in the past is that we've relied heavily on funds that are enterprise funds, and we've put in a budget that would have to be exceeded during the year based on the cost. So last year, when I first came in, we slashed the budget by about $11 million. And in those areas, we looked to where there may have been overspending, and we looked at cost-saving measures. This year, we're going to continue that. Uh, one of the areas that we will also still focus on to make sure that we can sustain the budget is also looking at opportunities to increase our revenues. Um, one of, in, in North Miami, in the past several years, we have kept the millage rate flat, which means it is difficult to to have a budget, have more expenses when you're not bringing in additional income. And while we do understand that we'd want to keep the, the taxes low for our residents, we also have to be looking innovatively for other revenue sources so that we can supplement our property taxes. But Teresa, for someone who's watching right now and who just doesn't understand all that you explain, in layman terms, explain to them what bringing additional revenues could look like? Well, it could be, it could look like trying to charge for things that we don't normally charge for. For instance, North Miami doesn't charge at all for parking. That is an area where most cities are bringing in charges for 
parking. So we need to look at areas and even our, some of our fees are some of the lowest in the city. So we would have to look at that. The other thing is we would need to help with development. People need to come here. They need to buy homes here so that there's taxes and people need to start businesses here so that we can have taxes. If we can get more commercial businesses here, that can raise the bottom line in terms of income and revenue. Teresa, how can Haitians assist in this process? I think Haitians can um, focus on the core of what I know as the Haitian people. When you look at Haiti, it's been an entre entrepreneurial spirit. And that is something that's really strong, uh, that's leading the way across the United States. And so many have come, and including my parents, have come and found a job, and they worked really hard so that uh, other generations, like me, can go to school. But I think this is a time to take a risk, right? There has been a survival mode, and I think it's time to, to pivot to thrive mode and to say, OK, I have this ability to create something. Let me go out and work on it as a business. What we know is that some of the most successful people in business have an entrepreneurial spirit, and they create their own business. One of the gems about North Miami is that we have a lot of small businesses and that you can thrive here. So I think Haitians are positioned for that because they've come with an entrepreneurial spirit. They've come with a survival spirit. And that is what it takes to really uh, bring your uh, entrepreneurial success. Teresa, you know, you've given me a great segue for what Haitians are going through right now as we speak. Although that was not part of the interview, I could not have you here without discussing the Texas border. What are your thoughts? This is a very tough, tough um, situation to be in. My first thought is we need to do this in a very humane way. The other thought that I have is we have some things in place here. I think we all understand that Haiti is not only going through an economic crisis, but it's also going through a political crisis. And for many years, we allow many other immigrants to come for political crisis. And if we don't have one today, I don't know when we would have without having the correct leadership that we need. Additionally, we know that the earthquake has come recently in August, and that has devastated the country. We've had TPS here. And we brought that in here. If there is any other condition to keep Haitians here in the United States, I think we have all of them here. So in my opinion, um, while I understand that we want to make sure that we maintain security in this country, I think we have to understand that this country was made up of immigration, that the immigration laws were made and created because we had an understanding that this country was going to bring in people from all over the world to make it a beautiful country. And it is incumbent upon our leaders to make sure that we not only assist them here to come into the United States, but that we provide them with many things that we've provided for other countries as well. We have capability of refugee assistance that is humane, that allows ways to get jobs, to have food, and to find living opportunities for the Haitians. So the leaders today must stand with the Haitians that are coming. They must provide them a place to be here. They must protect them with the avenues that we have with TPS. They must protect them with the avenues that we have with political asylum and they should allow the Haitians to continue to be here in the United States. Well, uh, with all of the specifics that you just shared, um, how do you feel about the Biden administration and how they've been moving forward with this crisis? I think with respect to the administration, um, this is a tough crisis. I think they need to move a little bit stronger in making sure that we keep a humane way of dealing with the Haitians that are coming in here. There are opportunities to embrace the migrants that are coming here, and I think that the leadership must do that. Thank you so very much, Teresa, for sharing those thoughts with us. We believe that those that are watching, whether they are within the Haitian community or not, they can align with everything 
that you just stated. So we're gonna get back to North Miami. So the hotel service industry is predominantly how most of Haitian immigrants, parents, who weren't well-to-do in Haiti obtain a piece of the American dream, as you actually stated earlier. They worked in these back-breaking hotel industries. However, strenuous, it allowed them to buy homes, put their children to school, through universities, and save enough to open small, small service businesses here. Because we know that we are service-oriented or service-driven, what do you think specifically in the service area can be brought to the city of North Miami right now? I think in the service area, um, we have a booming restaurant um, issue. There are many um, restaurant owners, uh, chefs. Uh, there has been um, recent breweries that have come. So I think in terms of that industry, the service industry restaurant is there. But I do want to say that one of the things that I think is unique about an immigrant population coming to the United States is that many of the people came here with other talents. Um, our parents may have been in accounting in Haiti and came to work in hotels to make sure that they could make that money. So I think this is the time to go back and say, well, I was great in accounting. Let me go back and get the accounting degree. Um, I, there's room for that still to do that. So while certain industries um, may not be thriving as well. I think it's time to say I have some talents and let me look at other industries and those that are available from the talents that I've had when I came here. Well, economic development is really important and integral for our city. So I wanted to develop an economic development team to make sure that we are out recruiting the right businesses, the right people to come into the city and to help it grow. It also allows us to reach out to the community and see what we need and what sectors we need to develop best and understand how the city is working, what is working, what isn't, so that we can help the community grow. So Teresa, I love the word recruiting and or the, the idea of having a recruiter, because in order for us to thrive in this area, we're, we're going to have to do some work and the work has to be done quickly. So please explain to me how ou qui gens dit en créole que nous ca uh, assurer que le nous gain recruter ça qui pa travail pour informer communauté a qui ça gagne qui ça nous ca fait pour assurer que haïtien joinn yon bénéfice dans ça qui pa créer. Nous besoin parler avec moun, nous besoin dire sur radio, sur télévision pour dire nous gain ressources dans ville. Yo ka vini, yo ka mandé, yo besoin vini dans ville. Connait ki ça n'a pas fait, vini dans réunion nous. Avec parler avec nous et mandé. Nous gagnons ressources pour business, mm -hmm. nous gagnons pour acheter caille, nous gagnons pour tout ça, mais on connaît haïtien yo pa vini pou pale yo rete on don kailan yo rete kote yo connaît pa gen sa m pa gen sa m pa gen sa oui so on vle di tout moun vin connaît ville lan mande question nou gen ou ka rele nou ou ke ou ka rele mande Qui j'aime qu'à acheter kai? Qui j'aime qu'à faire business moi? Nous gagnons classe, nous gagnons assistance, mais nous nous pouvons un monde pour venir en ville et mander par exemple ça. Parce que um, nous gagnons nous gagnons chance dans ville ça par l'autre ville. Parce que c'est ça, c'est ça, ça. Nous gagnons plus chance là dans North oui. Miami oui. que dans l'autre ville. Oui. C'est ça. Et je pense que les est nécessaire Oui. pour nous faire yon, bon on compare si c'est ça nous besoin faire dans le sens que faut nous gain stratégie pour oui. nous assister assister moun yo pour yo connait qui ça là qui gens yo ka accès qui ça là et si yo gain question si yo si yo pas comprendre pour yo connait que gain moun qui parle créole qui ka aider yo donc on pense ça c'est très bien um, Teresa et faut que nous joignent qui gens nous ka vraiment mobiliser communauté a Pour c'est pas seul monde qui dehors qui vient qui joue dans tout ça au palais oui. mais peuple nous mm -hmm. pas vrai ti mami ti papi mm -hmm. et business owner qui avocat qui comptable qui ingénieur 
qui a été dans l'autre ville. Si c'était l'autre ville, le côté nous voulons venir, non? Mais qui était dans l'autre ville qui a dit, ah, bon, qu'on nous bagaille, nous allons essayer dans notre Miami. Oui. C'est ça, nous besoin. Et c'est ça qui fait moi même mon recruiter, parce que là, on m'a dit son recruiter, on connaît que, on besoin de mettre ton bagaille devant, pour mon nom qu'on besoin d'aller oui. venir sur moi. Et moi, c'est ça, c'est une idée qui, qui, qui est très um, innovative. Et nous souhaitons que mon conseil là, et prend ça en main pour assurer que y'a bon j'arrête, y'a bon point, y'a bon sort besoin pour faire ville la marché. Exactement. C'est ça nous fait notre ville là. Um, c'est ça nous fait avec Economic Development. So, nous, nous prenons notre ville pour dire mon come vini come to North Miami na pedeo na uh, we will show you how to thrive here in North Miami I love it we will show you how to thrive in North Miami right now as the CEO of the city of North Miami what would you say is the one thing that you want to focus on I really want to focus on economic development and financial stability for the city. What I believe is the most helpful way to help a group is to allow them to know how to thrive. And so if we are focused on our economic development efforts, then I believe that the Haitian people that are here in the city of North Miami can benefit from that. I also believe that we need to look at some of the issues with respect to affordable housing. I want to make sure that as we develop as a city, that we've also made sure that we've prepared our residents currently and the future generations of those residents to be prepared to reap the benefits of the evolving city. In the last budget hearing, I heard you mention specifically about bolstering the economic development department. Specifically, what do you want to... Specifically, who do you want to bring on and what do you believe they will be able to bring to the city? I want to make sure that I bring on another economic development specialist so that they can come and focus on it. What I think they can bring to the city is attraction to bring here. One of the things that I noted um, in San Francisco, the city of Miami posted a billboard by the Golden Gate uh, Park and said, come to Miami. Those are efforts that we need to, to do that. After that posting, I actually had a friend that worked at one of the tech companies that texted me and said, hey, that was actually pretty enticing. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? And so one of the things that we need to do well of City of North Miami is let people know we are here. When you have someone that's focused on economic development, we're able to go out and tell people, North Miami is here. North Miami is open for business. North Miami is a beautiful place to live. And we've got cultural diversity. Diversity and inclusion has been part of almost every corporate uh, entity in the recent years. And we've got the strongest diversity across the United States, I would venture to say. And so if that's the case, this is the place where people need to come. And we need to let them know that. I want I want everyone to know that North Miami is its own city that's vibrant, that has possibilities, and that is uniquely situated for success. We are 25 minutes from the Fort Lauderdale Airport, 25 minutes from Miami International Airport. We are central. If there is a place to live, work, and play, this is the place to do it. Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you, attorney Teresa Thurlis and CEO of the city of North Miami for being here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, c'est ça que nous voulons faire. C'est ça que conversation basée sur lui. C'est pour nous assurer que nous joignons information que nous besoin, que nous même comme peuple haïtien qui vivent ici dans North Miami, nous engager nous. Deuxièmement, troisièmement, nous prenons action. Nous connaissons qui sa ville la gagne, nous connaissons qui sa ville la ka, ka ba nou, et nous connaissons qui bénéfice nous ka joindre dans la ville sa. Et nous tendons, et avocat Thurissa dit nous que, pas gon l'autre état que ou ka aller, pas gon l'autre ville que ou ka aller, là non, aux États-Unis, hein, pour joindre que ou gen tout haïtien sa yo ka vive là. Malgré bagay yo difficile, c'est vrai, mais gon pile ressource là non, North Miami, que nous ka mette tête nous ensemble. 
travailler ensemble et enfin pour nous faire thrive together. Thank you so very much for joining us. The conversation does not stop here. Keep it going with friends and family. And if you don't agree, let's learn to agree to disagree. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And until next time, have a great day.